So I'm dreaming of this place. It's Leopold's Book Bar Cafe. It's the dreamiest bookstore, cafe, and cocktail bar combo you'll ever find. And it's right here at 1301 Regent Street. They've got the latest books from around the world, wines to sip or take home, and live jazz, plus open hours until midnight most nights of the week. You can grab a drink or dessert and just kick back at Leopold's. Today on CityCast Madison. It's Thursday, so of course, we're dishing on Madison's food scene. And today we're talking supper clubs, a distinctly Wisconsin culinary tradition. Lindsay Christians of the Cap Times is here bringing us tales from the road. She knows the places you definitely want to check out here in Madison and across the state. It's Thursday, October 26th. I'm Molly Stentz, and here's what Madison's talking about. Lindsay, hello. Hi, how are you? Nice to see you. Well, I had a terrible cold over the weekend, but I'm doing better now because <laughs> it's fall and it's that season, but we are here To talk about supper clubs. I adore supper clubs. This is like a thing for me. So what's your favorite supper club in Madison? In Madison specifically, I have to go with Tornado. Of course. Uh, Tornado Steakhouse. I mean, it's a classic. The thing about Tornado is it it feels older than it is because I think it opened in like the 90s. But it has a very retro feel. It is one of those places where it's it's so comfortable inside tornado like all the banquets are very plush and the martinis are very cold and the the service is just it's always just lovely and i like to take people from out of town to tornado one of my favorite uh memories at the tornado was when my mother-in-law and father-in-law were in town i think they were helping us move house or something and the way that tornado does their relish tray it's in like a mug of ice or something and they just like stick celery and carrots and whatever and my mother-in-law thought it was her cocktail that they'd <laughs> forgotten to put the cocktail in. And she started yelling about that. Like, oh, no. Kind of loudly. Like, not in a, like, super angry way, just in a very vocal way. And I was like, oh, my God, oh, my God, I'm never going to be able to come back here again. You're like, you call this a poor? Where'd you get your <laughs> license, mister? Exactly. It was not. It was not great. What would you say they're best known for other than that cool vibe? I mean, I think the food there is very consistently good. Henry Doan runs the Tornado and also Tempest, right? I particularly love the late night menu at Tornado, which just recently started to really come back. So you can eat at Tornado until midnight from Wednesday through Saturday. And they have a salmon sandwich that's great. I'm obsessed with their rabbit, which is not a late night thing, but that's on the regular menu. But they have this like rabbit schnitzel kind of thing. It's absolutely delicious. You know, any supper club is going to be known primarily for steaks and seafood. So some others that I love in town include like Delaney's charcoal steaks out on the west side. Mm. My husband lost his mind (laughs) at Delaney's. He loved it so much. He was like, I would eat anything on this menu. Got a little bit of a higher end feel. Really nice martinis there, too. And then for something a little bit more casual, but still, I would say, in the supper club realm, Toby's near McFarland just feels like stepping back in time. It's so retro. I love they have hash browns with American cheese on them. And that's just delicious. (laughs) Like a hash brown patty with a slice of American cheese. I'm here for that. Then we like Jeopardy on the TV. And then they had like great perch and bluegill fish fry. All these places obviously do, you know, great old fashions. But yeah, I like Toby's a lot. So I have to ask, though, what makes the supper club a supper club as opposed to, you know, a dive bar or a diner? For sure. So this definition varies by person a little bit. So there are people who will say it's not a supper club unless they have a relish tray. And there are people who will say it's not a supper club unless they have ice cream drinks for dessert, for example. <gasps> like a grasshopper or something? Yes, or a, or a pink lady or something like that. Yeah, or Brandy Alexander, which mm-hmm. I always want like two bites of. And then I'm like, oh, I'm good. But 
the definition of a supper club, it's, it's a little bit mutable, but here's my definition. Supper club is family owned. It is never corporate owned. They have old fashions, always. Wine is on the rise in in supper clubs all over the state and has been for, you know, 10, 20 years. But old fashions are a staple. Steaks and seafood are going to be the main things. You're going to have weekend specials like fish fry and prime rib. There will sometimes be ice cream drinks. Not always. There will sometimes be relish trays. The feel of a supper club is abundance. That is the vibe. So bread baskets, salad bars, like the sides, the salad and the potato and the soup and everything else, it's all included. Nothing's a la carte at a supper club. Often you'll see, uh, especially as you get out into more rural parts of Wisconsin, you'll see the little twinkly lights, the little yes. Christmas lights all year round. I love those. I see a lot of popcorn in uh, certain supper clubs. The Wisco in Lomira has popcorn. You'll see pull tabs sports memorabilia like the buckhorn and milton has like a whole room that's just full of like sports stuff on the wall there's a lot of taxidermy in supper clubs around wisconsin i don't know that i think taxidermy makes a supper club but it is a thing that you will see in like the duck inn in delavan there's an entire wall full of taxidermy ducks uh ishnala is like they took a zoo and they stuffed it. Like, <laughs> there's so much taxidermy. Many of them are only open for supper. They are supper clubs. Uh, a lot of them are on a body of water. So the Copper Dock in Hubertus is a beautiful supper club. It's north of here. And it's just, it's you can watch the sunset over the lake. Um, the Buckhorn, I just mentioned in Milton, is on Lake Koshkanong. Uh, the Hobnob in Racine, you like literally drive toward Lake Michigan until you cannot go anymore. And that's where the Hobnob is. They have a sign like, stop here, you'll be in the lake. Um, <laughs> so they're, they're often uh, in places that are rural and picturesque. Yeah. But are they all, uh, they remind me of kind of 1950s, 1960s Americana. I mean, are they all of that era or is there such thing as like a new supper club that's a good question when you see news about a new supper club it's not in wisconsin so it's like we're opening a restaurant in chicago or new york or whatever that's like a wisconsin supper club vibe yeah what you are seeing i think more than anything are younger folks starting to take over older supper clubs it's really tough to make the business model work because running a restaurant, as we all know, is getting more expensive with inflation and with the cost of labor and everything else. And supper clubs do operate on this sort of older business model. And it's more expensive. It's just expensive to run a restaurant and it's expensive to run a restaurant in a small town, um, especially if you're only open for supper and those are the those are the hours that you can make your money back. So for a long time, supper clubs were really closing. Like there was this sort of attrition in supper clubs. And now, like maybe the past like five to seven, 10 years, we we started to see this sort of supper club renaissance where people are making little supper club tours and, they're, and, and there's more interest in them and people are coming back to them. So there's been this kind of millennial push uh, back into supper clubs. So I judge supper clubs by their old fashions. I mean, I'm not going to lie. That's what I am there for. So I got to ask you, who does it best? That is a difficult thing to answer because there are different ways to make old fashions, right? There are places that will do a mix, right? Where they they mix in like the, the sugar, water, and the bitters together. And they use that as like the base oh. versus muddling like they do with the old fashioned. Not many places muddle, I will say. It's rare to see muddling because it takes a long time. And if you're at a supper club and you've got a lot of people yeah. coming through, you want to have something that you can do really quick. So I I mean, I like the the old fashions at Ishnala. Um, I like the old fashions at pretty much everywhere I've been. My standard order is a bourbon old fashioned press, which is half Sprite and half soda water, club soda. And... I like to ask for J. Henry bourbon because I like the folks at J. Henry and I want to support them in supper clubs, you know, when I'm outside of Madison. I think of 
the old fashioned as being kind of part of that supper club experience. It's like, I'm going to be in wherever I am, like Palmyra or Lodi or somewhere in the middle of Wisconsin, where this is the place that you go for dinner. And the old fashioned is what the old fashioned is. It's not like I could go next door and get a better one. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's more of like a like a Rorschach or something of the local community. What about the decor? I mean, also, I feel like you go into a supper club, it is dark, right? Like it is dark, it is cozy. You got the plush seats, like you mentioned the twinkly lights, like you feel like you could disappear there or or hide out from the world there. Who's got the best vibe? Oh my gosh. So I think it really does depend on kind of what you're going for, but I one of the things that I love about supper clubs is that they are all different because they're independently owned. So I do love the vibe at Ishnala. Ishnala is on the lake. It's gorgeous. There are four bars there. It's about to close for the season, but my ideal wait time is about 45 minutes. We bring cards. It's just, we go to one of the bars and we just hang out and eat, well, you know, trail mix, whatever. And it's delightful. I love the Dell bar, which is also in the Dells. And that is really beautiful too. We went there and we went to the Hobnob in Racine, which I also just mentioned. The Hobnob in Racine has like different decor in every room. Ooh. It's a beautiful place to be. We went to both of those on different uh, Valentine's days. And that's always a crazy time to visit a supper club because they are slammed and everybody's dressed up. Um, but it was just, it was, the food's really good. And it was really fun to just be there when everybody was all swanky. And, and like at the Hobnob, they were going around with a heart and like taking pictures of people inside the heart. And I was like, well, okay. Um, <laughs> this is fine. You're just trying to make people be patient while we wait for our food. Um, but I love the vibes. Many of them are really German. There's like a lot of Germanic influence sure, sure. in supper clubs. Jack Pandel's Whitefish Bay Inn, which is in Milwaukee, has like steins everywhere. Um, the Schomburg Dinner Club in Randolph, which is cash only. Great vibes. And I think there have been some supper clubs that I've been to that have that like there's one in Janesville called I think Helgeson's Harpo. But that is much it's much more casual, like closer to a tavern. I've been to a lot of those as well. The ones that I'm thinking of, though, are the ones that are like just a little fancier. Yeah. You know, what makes people want to keep supper clubs alive? You know, as we've talked about, they they are of this era. We're not necessarily like getting any new ones, but yet they still have an appeal. They still have this popularity. Like you mentioned, they're everywhere. What is it about supper clubs that we love so much? I think it is the abundance and the warmth that you feel in a supper club, especially like a lot of the year you're coming in out of the cold. Yeah. And here's this place where people are seeing other people that they know. They're getting together because this is the this is the thing that they do on Friday nights. You know, they come for the Saturday prime rib and it is earlier in the evening. It'll be families. And and then, you know, as it gets later, people will linger. I I love making a supper club a full event where like we go, we spend, you know, 45 minutes to an hour with our old fashions and our cribbage board. And then we said going into dinner and we get to have a leisurely dinner. And I think it's the vibe of like the abundance. And also they're each so different. They're they have similar qualities to each other and that we can be talking about supper clubs as a thing. But like the Butterfly Club in Beloit has a lounge singer on Friday nights and it is so beautiful what? in there. It's so cool. But they have a legit actual lounge. Sing- like it's so cool. Eric's Porterhouse in Waukesha is in this really cool old building with like pillars out front. Um, Palmer's Steakhouse in Heartland. You've got to visit there around Christmas. Everything, the ceiling is just hung with everything. Like Smokey's used to be, it was just, you could barely walk (laughs) for all the stuff hanging from the ceiling. That is such a cool spot. And, And I have like specific memories of some of these places where I was like, oh yeah, remember that one we went to and the heating it, like wasn't working so it was freezing or or Yikes. we'd go to one and like there was one we went to in Burlington I think and the building was from the 1800s and they had a women's entrance where the women were allowed to come in in the back and like an Whoa. old pot-bellied stove there's history in these places and it's our history and they all have their own communities that have sort of built up around them and so it does feel like you're getting a little glimpse of the past but also 
how how we gather now as communities in Wisconsin, like it feels very focused on the supper club. The supper club is part of that culture, I think. It reflects the communities that they're in and they're gathering places for those community. Exactly. Yeah. So, Lindsay, it seems like you are a supper club aficionado. I don't know if that is your official title, but I just gave it to you. (laughs) And you're not the only one, right? Some supper clubs have this cult following. Like there are whole books written about them. Like where do you go to keep up with the latest and greatest? I love this question. I can be a great resource for anyone who loves supper clubs and wants to go to more of them. So first thing, the Wisconsin Supper Club Enthusiasts on Facebook excellent resource. I, if I'm going somewhere and I don't know where like a supper club is around there, I will uh, go to that Facebook page and just Google wherever I'm going to be. And there inevitably are great recommendations there of like, oh, you have to try this one. Oh, try this at, at this place. It's great. There's a blog that I discovered a few years ago. I don't know how often they're updating it now, but it still has some good info. It's called Gene and Owen's Supper Club blog. The cool thing about that blog, the thing that I liked the most about it was just that they had a map and it's a Google map and you can just look and see and you can be like, okay, I'm going to be up north. Here are the places that I can go. So yeah, Gene and Owen's Supper Club blog. Also, if you love supper clubs, make it a point to see Holly DeRoyter's wonderful movie. It's called Old Fashioned. Uh, It is about supper clubs it came out a few years ago you can sometimes still see it on pbs wisconsin but i think you can stream it it's just a delightful film the characters in it it's all just people at wisconsin supper clubs and she's interviewing like the owners and stuff but also she like went up to diners (laughs) talked to them about like what they like about it and there are these old couples being like yeah you know it's just good it's just good you know (laughs) it's just it's such a charming film um that's really fun ron fiola has written four books about supper clubs. I think three were kind of roundups. And then the fourth one is like a history of the supper club, which actually started in England, like for after theater, and then kind of migrated and became this different thing in the US and in Wisconsin. But I did a piece with him a couple of years ago when that book came out. And he he did some digging. Supper clubs tend to burn down a lot. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, they just... They have a history of burning down, um, like lots of them burned. So he he writes about all of that and he looks into like some of the gangster history of, you know, the gangsters visiting the supper clubs in Wisconsin. I have heard that, that yeah. people like to claim Al Capone's been to their supper club. And really, it's like, OK, how many could he really have been to? Yeah. And then Mary Bergen wrote a great supper club cookbook that I have to recommend. It's just it. she's got great interviews in there with. Uh, individual supper club owners from all over the state. But then there's recipes that they shared and she was able to share with us. So that's a cool thing too. I I just want to say too how I love how the supper club has spawned things that are inspired by it, yet not supper clubs, you know? So like the old fashioned is like a downtown Madison restaurant. It's not a supper club. The Harvey House is a fine dining restaurant. It's not a supper club, but they're both inspired by supper clubs, right? So it can become this thing beyond what it is. It's a cultural force. Supper clubs are a cultural force. Well, Lindsay, I always learned so much from you. You are a wealth of knowledge. We have got to go supper clubbing. Also, I love how that's a verb now. And we're going. So thank you. Supper clubbing. Yeah, it's delightful. You heard it here. Lindsay Christian, thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me. That was Cap Time's food editor, Lindsay Christians. For a list of supper clubs we talked about, check out our show notes. And here's what else Madison's talking about. A hon! They're opening on Willie Street tomorrow. As our friend Lindsay Christians reported this week, a hon opens Friday, October 27th, at its new location in the old El Dorado Grill on Willie Street. The Laotian-inspired restaurant has been at the Baroque on Winnebago Street, but they've needed a bigger spot. I mean, if you've ever waited for a table there, you know. And... The election for Dane County Executive won't be until next year, but it already has its first candidate. This week, Madison Alder Regina Vitiver announced she'll run to succeed the current exec, Joe Parisi, when he retires in May. Vitiver currently works for the Wisconsin Department of Health Services. She's got a background in health policy research and noted that health and human needs is the largest part of the county's budget. There's still plenty of time for other candidates to jump into the race, 
Parisi's retiring next May, and the special election to replace him will occur in November 2024. That's all for today here on CityCast Madison. I'm Molly Stentz. If you enjoyed the show, why not share the episode with someone who likes The Breakfast Club? We'll be back tomorrow morning with more stories from around the city. Ciao.